In this segment, you'll learn how to record a macro in Microsoft Excel and assign a shortcut key combination to run the macro. Macros let you create a shortcut to perform a sequence of commands all at once. For example, you could create a macro for building a sales report template that you often use. Whenever you run the macro, Microsoft Excel will instantly build a new template in the format that you recorded. Before you can record a macro, you need to access the Developer tab in the top navigation bar. If the tab is not already visible, click on the Office button to open the drop-down menu and click the button at the bottom for Excel options. In the section for Popular Options, check the box to Show Developer tab in the ribbon. Then click OK. Now you should see the Developer tab in the top navigation. At this point, you can record your macro. In the Developer tab, you're going to look in the group for Code and choose the option to Record Macro. The dialog box will prompt you to type a name for your macro. The names are not case-sensitive, but the first character must be a letter and the name can't contain spaces or cell references, which is the location of a cell or group of cells in a spreadsheet, like C32 or D14. Then you have the option to create a shortcut key combination. The shortcut key can't be a number or a special character. It has to be a letter. Also, if you enter a lowercase letter, Excel will sign it as Control plus the lowercase letter combination. If you type an uppercase letter, you have to press Control and Shift plus the letter to run the macro. And if you select a shortcut key that Excel already uses, the macro will override the Excel shortcut while the workbook with the macro is open. The workbook is the particular file that you're working on in Excel at that moment. In this case, I'm going to use Control J. Now in the drop-down list, you can choose where to store the macro. If you choose this workbook, the macro will only be in the current workbook file. If you choose New Workbook, you can use this same macro in any new workbooks that you create during this same session in Excel. And then Personal Macros Workbook lets you run this macro whenever you use Excel. I'm going to limit my use to this workbook. If you want, you can even add a description of the macro down below and then click OK. At this point, Excel is going to record any keystrokes as you type. You'll notice that the Record Macro option in the Developer tab has changed to Stop Recording, so you want to do the steps exactly as you want them recorded until you complete the full sequence for the shortcut. When you're recording an absolute macro, Excel is going to take literally what you do. So if I place my cursor right now in cell B4, whenever I run the macro, it will always place the cursor in B4 but I want to have my cursor go to cell B in the next row down, regardless of where I am in the spreadsheet. So for this, I need to record a relative macro. That lets me record steps that are relative to any current cell. To do this, I'm going to go up to the Developer tab and in the Code group, choose Use Relative References. Now I'm going to type my action. I'm using the Control plus J shortcut to indicate that I want the cursor to jump to cell B in the next row down. And then, turn off the Relative References function again. You can turn this function on and off as often as you need to when recording a macro, and you can record absolute functions in between. I'm done with this macro, which is just one simple command, so I'll click to stop recording on the button right above. When you're done recording, it's a good idea to save your file before moving on, so I'm going to click up to the Save icon. And now I'm going to test the end result. I'll place my cursor in a different cell and type something. Then use my shortcut keys, Control J, and the cursor jumps to cell B in the next row down. If I'm entering data and I get to the end of this row and type the shortcut key combination again, I go back to cell B in the next row so I can keep entering data. That's my macro in action. Mission accomplished.